Alright, we're gonna fill this thing up and we're gonna let me engage. So we're almost here. Our marker here is the one. When it hits that one, they usually engage pretty quickly after that. So it's filling up right now. I wanted to let it get this on camera when we're tapping it, uh, topping it off, letting them engage on their own. And like I said, we're gonna show you the difference, uh, how we can make this thing engage with the water level below the standpipe. We're even gonna get to the point where it's three inches below the standpipe. We're gonna show that on the tape. We're gonna describe, discuss why these things are so necessary. Now, when we get below the standpipe three inches, she's fixing to engage any second now. Uh, we will shut these Venturi T's off. We got little valves on them, we will shut them off. Because of the weight of the water and the water draining at the same time with the other bell siphon is gonna cause um, too much pressure. So we're gonna have to shut these two off to create to increase the vacuum to engage it. But that's that's not the norm. If you're if you're a bell siphon need to engage when the water is three inches below the standpipe, you got other issues. But what it does demonstrate is how strong the link between these bell siphons are. And if you should get trash in your system uh, and you, it, starts, it stops up the bell siphon temporarily, uh, it will engage again. Now there is a limit to how low, we're starting to get a little flow down here. Once you reach below 50% or half the volume of your water, no matter what you do, it cannot suck it up. It, it just don't have that kind of torque unless you have more than two bell siphons. Uh, if it's a three or four bell siphon, then it's very possible that in combination with the, all of them together, it could create enough suction to keep that third one in. We're getting bubble on this one. She's went. This one will be going any minute. There she goes. That one just went. So what we're going to demonstrate now, we're going to let it flow for a minute. And then what we're going to demonstrate is I'm going to pull each bell siphon up, show you the water's below the standpipe on each one of them a little bit, and then drop them back down and watch them re-engage again. Um, this is to show you there's no difference between the bell siphons. Both of them are identical, uh, just a one inch standpipe. Let's pull this one up, let's take a look. Well, we're right at the bottom of the bottom of it. We're gonna drop it down, let it go a little bit more. She should get engaged, there she goes. She's gonna engage all by herself. I'm gonna walk over to this one over here. We're gonna pull this one up. We're gonna take a look at it. It is actually a bit below the standpipe, about an eighth of an inch. Uh, no flow. Flow is totally stopped. We're going to put it back on. And it will engage again. There's the bubbles. That's it getting rid of that positive pressure. And there it goes. <clears throat> Let's see, now we're down pretty good ways. Remember, engaged right about the one. And we're about a half inch down. About a half inch down. You see how fast it takes for that one to kick in. No flow. She bubbles. There she goes. She takes off again by herself. Now, reminding you that this is below the standpipe. And this water is in a continuously draining process. So the level is falling constantly. We're going to go back to this one over here. Pull it up. We got ooh, probably about a good inch. Right at an inch. We're going to drop it down, no flow, drop it down, and there's the bubbles, and there she goes. Now, I'm going to explain something to y'all so y'all think it's no tricks. When we do do this, we will shut these valves to create enough suction for the three inch. But it's not a trick, it's just because the weight of the water and the downward movement of the water, it takes that much to bring it up. So I'm going to go ahead and break this bell siphon right quick. We're going to use this one as our marker. Not any particular reason, just I like to be on this side of the camera. As you can see, it is just a regular inch and a half, Schedule 40, PVC with a cap on it. Nothing on the inside, nothing on the standpipe. We're going to set this uh, right here. Now, these bell siphon, these Victoria T's, like I said, it releases the positive pressure. If I shut this off before I put this back on there, it will create a positive pressure. It has nowhere to go because it's underwater on the bottom. It won't kick in. So I cannot turn this valve off until I'm ready. I drop the bell on it and release that positive pressure. Then I'll crank down the valve and this one I'll shut down 
and then it will create suction and it will engage. And we won't do that until it's got three inches, but I'm going to go ahead and close this one off right now. You'll see the bubbles will start to clear up. And I'm going to give a measurement on this side over here. We're at almost two inches. I really want it to go to three inches. It takes a little bit draining off of just one bell siphon. But I really want y'all to see this because like I said, we've looked all over the net. We have not found anybody that can got a bell siphon that will self-engage when the water level is three inches below the top of the sandpipe. I have not seen one yet. Yeah. If there is one out there, we would love for somebody to post up and let us know. I would love to see this. We'll check our level again. We're just a little over two inches. <clears throat> like I said, these venture tees are very, very critical. Three critical parts to this. The drain pipe must be underwater at all times to create the negative pressure. The venturi T must be on there to help vent it when it goes to break. It helps vent it when it creates uh, the vacuum. Um, and in the purge line between the two or three or four or five or higher many uh, venturi uh, uh, bell siphons you do. Now when you do multiple bell siphons, more than two, you're gonna create double the vacuum. So when you have two engaged, it's gonna pull twice as much vacuum. It should pull off two. That's why we believe this is going to be a cascading system. We're at two and a half inches. <clears throat> because to double the vacuum, double the vacuum, means um, double the bell siphons engaging. The more bell siphons engage, the more that shell engage. Let's go back over here. Let's take a look and see what we got now. We're right about two and three quarters. We're going to let go just a little bit more. And as you can see, there is no flow. There's no movement at that pipe at all. All right, we're about two and three quarters. Like I said, I really would like to get a full uh, three inches on this so you can see. We're dealing with a nine inch. This is eight inches from the bottom of the bed. Four inches is half. So we don't want to get nowhere near the four inch mark. Or we'll embarrass ourselves. Three and three quarters. I mean two and three quarters. And like I said, this, we want to give this idea to the public. This is for anybody that wants to get into aquaponics or anybody that has multiple bell siphon issues, uh, breaking or, or starting. Especially if you got a lot of dirt in your beds, um, this should help. We're right about three now. So let me just touch the surface of the water. There is no devices on this thing. What you see is what it is. It's simple mechanics. Right at three. All right. Let me drop this on. Just gonna drop it on there. Then I'm gonna shut this off. And we're going to start watching for the flow down here. As you can see, that quick, three inches, it's already started to find itself, and it engaged. And it will do so every single time. Three inch. Nobody else's bell siphon can do three inch. And like I said, we're going to do another video. We're going to show you how to make these. There are certain steps you got to take in order to make these to make these work properly.